Hi, my name is Nduta Waweru. I am from Nairobi and welcome to Book Lovers. Um, reading to me is a lifelong habit. I think I started reading when I was young as three years old, if I'm not wrong. And since then it has been this bit for me where I go to when I need an escape. Sometimes when I need to learn more about something and most times just to learn more about the world I think reading and especially reading fiction gives you an insight into the Minds and behavior of human beings that makes you understand understand them better or basically learn more about them um, What I'm currently reading I think uh, you all know the Netflix series called Bridgerton it is the rev at the moment and I watched the eight episodes in like hours and uh, from there I decided you know what let me go back to the books it's basically a Regency romance from the 1800s and basically talking about how the English uh, Regency period and the marriage market and all these people getting together and all the struggles of uh, getting a husband or a wife and uh, interestingly it has so many things about the human nature and especially in England at that point that makes you just I don't know lose your mind and not in the right sense because for the longest time all these things about women being the second sex women being almost always the second citizen has its basis there so for example at this point all people needed to do was present yourself become women basically present yourself become as dumb as you can so that you don't uh, overpower your potential suitors you don't um, mess up your eligibility and then also you don't get into a situation where re your reputation and basically reputation meant everything to do with sex and intimacy was ruined so that you could get an eligible husband but then again that is the, the that time so the books are best the, the the series is based on julia queen's books and um, they are about eight nine books and um on book seven at the moment starting thursday yeah that is what i'm reading the kinds of books i read depends with so many things at the point i'm picking the book uh, I am not the kind of person who would go to a shop and basically, or basically just say I need, I have a list of books to read within the year. In the most times, the books I read and the books I pick depend with my mood, with my disposition, and the current events at the point in time. So in 2020 with coronavirus, I have... Um, not been able to read a lot, but I remember what I was reading. Uh, first of, I read a lot of fiction because fiction is, uh, it talks about the human condition without necessarily building up or focusing so much on the facts of the matter. And um, I, I read, um, what's her name? I read Girl, Woman, Other. That's definitely on top of my list last year. I read Everything Inside by Edwidge Danticat. That's also, it's a collection of short stories. And it was very interesting because it talks about the emotional, the emotion of loss and the emotion of grief and everything that comes in between. When it comes to my favorite authors, I have quite a number. And one of them is Sembene Osman. He's from Senegal. And he is he he wrote quite a number of books and one of the favorite is Zala. Zala is about this man who is a proper proper alhaji, and he ends up losing his um, his ability to sire children. He becomes important at the time he has just married his third wife, and you know what that means for older men with a young gashungwa, if I can use that word. Um, another book that I like 
is George Lamings in the Castle of My Skin. I read that in uh, university back then, and it was interesting for me because it uh, talked about the simple, almost subtle effects of colonialism. So the story is about a 10, 11 year old child who talks about his life as he's growing up in Jamaica under the colonialism. And uh, not under, just after Jamaica has gotten its independence and how they're being taught about things and bits about colonialism, why the queen is still the queen of Jamaica and that's why they have a prime minister, why the 10 pence is a 10 pence and not whatever it is. And basically it's a coming of age story of this young boy and trying to just leave all these factors or survive the impact of colonialism without necessarily talking about it that way. So that's one of the things that made that book stand out for me. The other book that also stood out for me is uh, Chimamanda Adichie, Half of a Yellow Sun. Um, basically, we understand what the, this, the impact of a bigger event on small units, the families, the, the relation, interrelationships between people. Like we have this small setting, but put in a bigger setting that makes you think and make you understand about everything big has an impact on everything small and everything small has an impact on everything big and um i'm trying to remember other books quite a lot i've read because i studied we really, uh, in education in english and literature and reading books was definitely part of the of the of the of the study so you couldn't run away from that and it's also from that that I've been able to read quite a number of books in a very short span of time because you re really needed the tenacity and the speed to actually make sure by the end of the semester you're able to make sense of what you're, you're writing in the papers. Um, besides that, uh, my favorite authors. This is one of those questions I'm going to be so bland about because i usually say the person i'm reading at the moment is my favorite author because there is there is a reason i picked that book there's a reason that i picked that particular author at that point in time and julia queen because i'm reading the bridgerton series is very very interesting and she has a way with the language that makes it quite fun to go through her books and to just enjoy reading her Paper books or ebooks? <laughs> I'd say that in the past I was a paper book kind of a person until it got to one, moving houses, two, traveling, and three, just carrying a book wherever. So from then on, I tried to switch, I actually switched to ebooks. Um, and now I am an ardent ebook fan. Uh, all my books basically are ebooks at the moment, even the Bridgerton series that I'm reading. And um, it is it has its advantages. One, I can have so many books in a, such a small package. I have the Kindle app on my phone, I have a Kindle, and I have other ebook um, readers as well. So there is also that flexibility of reading everything and anything. I'm not completely done with paperbacks because I also some books are not available as ebooks or Kindle uh, editions. So basically, those are the kinds of books that I go and get from a physical store. A lot of times, there are local books. A lot of Kenyan authors that uh, do not have a Kindle or ebook edition. So that's why I get the paperbacks as well. How do I read? I'm the kind of person to read anywhere at any time. I read in my tattoos when I'm commuting to work. I read um, when I am uh, somewhere alone waiting for someone or even sometimes I just go at a place and just sit and read uh, for the love of reading. Yeah, that's basically it. One of the biggest tips that I have um, picked or one of the biggest habits that I've picked basically when I am reading is that you do not need to finish a book uh for the longest time i was that person if i've picked a Workout book no wonder how crazy or how boring or how not in the mood i was because of the book 
I just had to make sure I trudge along until the last full stop. But then I got to a point and I was thinking, why am I wasting my time? Why am I that person who is trying to finish a book for the sake of finishing the book? If the book is not giving me the value or the kind of impact I wanted, then what's the point? So, and I've become such an ardent, um, what's called, uh, preacher of that. If you don't fill the book, leave it. Sometimes it's because your mind is not at the point to finish a book. And um, yeah, if you can put it aside and, and then come back to it with a fresh mind, then probably you will get more value out of it as compared to just flipping through the pages. Um, the other thing as well that I have uh, learned is read as many books as you can. When I say my favorite uh, genre is fiction, I don't necessarily stick myself to only fiction. I read across the board. I can read a non-fiction book, I can read a very good sci-fi edition, um, a lot of um, Nedi Korafo, she does really very brilliant, brilliant uh, Afric, Afric futurism, I think that's what she said. Uh, they're quite, read, you can read across the board. Don't just pick something and just say, then I'm stuck with this for the rest of my life, because eventually you lose out quite a lot of things that are happening outside of the genre that you've picked. Um, in my journey of reading, I have tried so many things. Uh, I think in 20... 17, I told myself I'll finish at 100 books in a year, and I did. In 2018, I said that I'll try to read as many African or African diaspora women. And I think the biggest bunch, I think about 80% of the books I read that year were that African or African diaspora women. And I realized that we have a lot more to offer the world in the sense of... Um, the content, the nuances that not a man or a white person would not would not get. Um, there's so many things that you read and you you read a page and you basically understand. I would give an example of uh, how to mar how to love a Jamaican. It is a collection of short stories. All characters are Jamaican or linked in a way to Jamaica. But when you read it and you hear somebody talking about an uncle that only shows up when there is good things in the house or an uncle who is now proud of you because, well, you did something valuable. And you can immediately relate with that to yourself or to your family or to somebody else's family. It clicks. Like, there is so much in common we have across the diaspora and on the motherland. But at the same time, there are nuances that you can you can pick and you actually makes your experience richer. Uh, the other thing as well, I'd say a lot of North African books are... Uh, are ignored by the rest of the continent this is a personal opinion i am not uh, it's not statistically proven or scientifically proven but i feel that we've read a lot of sub-saharan african content as compared to the northern of, uh, of africa and they also have very interesting stories um children of gabelawi uh, is quite an interesting book and it gives an insight like it is an allusion to the bible and it's quite very interesting to listen to read and and get to enjoy just the 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 writing and the flow of our northern counterparts also books from eastern of um of of of, of the world the far east as well as just uh, middle east and in Russia as well, they give you really, really good different experience that you would not necessarily get uh, anywhere else. So, yeah, read more, expand your horizon. Uh, don't denigrate romance books just because they can give you an insight into things you wouldn't otherwise uh, think you know. And, um, yeah, basically that's it.